welcome everybody to uh, today's webinar. It's quite an exciting uh, webinar we've got talking about the best social customer service strategies. So I think a very uh, hot and a very uh, relevant uh, topic to us all uh, today. Uh, the agenda, just want to uh, introduce to you Dave Ogden from uh, Aspect. Dave is going to be talk talking us through the best uh, co uh, customer the best social customer service strategies, that's a bit of a, a mouthful, and uh, uh, taking us through as well as a technology demonstration as well, which I think is going to be absolutely fascinating. Then we'll be going through top tips from the audience, your chance to win a bottle of champagne, and interactive questions and answers as well. But before we get into that, what I want to do is I want to share a poll with you, and that is what channels do you cover in your contact center? So I'm just going to uh, launch the poll now. Uh, you can vote for all that uh, apply. So the uh, choices are email, web chat, Twitter, Facebook, and website comment. Dave, presumably um, I'd imagine email will come up very high. Do you think web chat's going to be very, very widespread? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think most organizations are offering some form of web chat as a kind of media channel. It's, it's relatively mature. Um, I think the thing with web chat is people still, some people still, still think, seem to think there's a, a proactive form of web chat where you kind of go on a website and then uh, it offers you to chat. Well, it's the website doing the proactive, it's the website doing the proactive piece, isn't it? Rather than the the kind of engine behind it. So uh, it's re it's really interesting actually that space. Okay, well let's have a look and see what the uh, results come up on the uh, up on the screen. And uh, email comes up uh, top, almost everyone doing it. Uh, followed by website comments, um, Twitter and uh, Facebook. Facebook quite ahead of Twitter. That's that's a bit of a surprise, I'd say there. And uh, web chat coming in about 42%. Be very interesting to find out what uh, anyone's doing with uh, web chat. So if you'd just like to um, pop into the uh, into the chat room, uh, just type a little message about what you're doing with web chat. It would be very interesting to. Very interesting to see that. So just going to hide that. I want to just drill down onto another poll as well, which is, uh, what is your target response time to a tweet from Twitter? Let's have a look at the uh, results. I think this is quite uh, quite surprising uh, yeah, here. 41% are not responding to tweets from Twitter, so I think they're going to learn quite a lot from uh, today's webinar, which would be good. Um, and actually, one hour, less than an hour, is actually surprisingly, surprisingly lately low on that. So I guess there's some uh, challenges that are likely to be faced if you're uh, taking that long to. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting answer. space. I suppose it, it kind of depends on what time of the day, you know, what type of operation you're running. Is it 24/7 or uh, is it more, you know, eight till nine or something? So perhaps that's where some of the one days are, are coming in, but. Um, it, it's quite, I'm actually quite surprised that the, the up to one day is, is quite as high as it is. As it is. Uh, I'm not very surprised about the five minute piece. Um, it's one of those either you've got the tools that allow you to do it or, or you don't really unfortunately, but the one hour I'm, I'm surprised isn't a lot higher. Yeah, that certainly, uh, certainly surprised me. So I'm now delighted to introduce to you Dave uh, Ogden from Aspect. And uh, Dave is going to take us through um, the best customer, best social customer service strategies. So, uh, Dave, you'd like to get your slides up on the screen, and if you could uh, take us through your presentation, I can see it, uh, see it fine now. Absolutely. So, uh, thank you very much for your time uh, today, everyone. I appreciate that you were all kind of very, very busy, and some interesting results there, as John T and I have kind of discussed. Um, so I want to start off with just uh, some consumer trends. So I appreciate that the kind of numbers on the left-hand side are a little bit old now into 2011, uh, but still hold relatively true even though uh, I don't have uh, the latest numbers uh, on the, this particular slide. So social media uh, takes up more time uh, than, any, than any other form of, of kind of activity uh, online. Um, so you know, even double the next uh, highest, which is online gaming. Uh, which you might be quite surprised at, actually, because uh, certainly when we started seeing these, uh, we weren't really sure why social media was quite so important, but uh, or quite so prevalent. And <clears throat> I think you know through some of the research that we've done, uh, this is around uh, customers or or people doing you know scouring the web, if you will, for reviews on particular products and things. So you know, kind of reviewing things before you make purchases, as well as you know the likes of Facebook uh, and Twitter and everything. So uh, as Facebook. 
um, has become even you know even more prevalent. Um, people are, are beginning to use that almost as a, a media or a form by which you can kind of keep in contact with friends and family. You know, the phone is kind of beginning to die away a little bit in, in favour of more text-based. Uh, and the you know the rise of Twitter is you know you'll see in some of the slides later that uh, the the kind of company followings are increasing massively. But an important statistic to to kind of remember is that. Um, there are there are kind of two forms really at the moment of social engagement, which is proactive contact, typically by marketing and PR uh, departments, uh, who are kind of pushing information out to consumers as well as you know reacting to customer comments and the like. But uh, looking at the first part, around about 14% of consumers trust advertisements and advertisements, are, you know, even digital advertisements. So it's not just perhaps TV or press or whatever. So 14% of consumers kind of trust them, whereas 90% would uh, trust you know peer recommendations. Or, or maybe some kind of community uh, forum board, if that makes sense. And that's really important. Hopefully, throughout the, the kind of uh, presentation this morning, or sorry, this afternoon, it's going to be uh, around how community is actually an extremely important part of a social media strategy rather than social media engagement, which I guess probably most of you at the moment uh, are kind of in, in the space of. Um, if we kind of dive into uh, some of the, the brands, so you'll recognize obviously Starbucks, Coca and McDonald's. Uh, the June 2013 stats I pulled off um, about, uh, I think I pulled them off on Monday actually as it happens. So from September 2012 to, to you know a few days ago, around about nine months give or take, uh, Starbucks have seen uh, around about an 80% increase in the, the number of followers they have on Twitter. Uh, Coca-Cola's seen around about you know 67%. Uh, and McDonald's, which I'm really very surprised about, actually, uh, given uh, they were quite a slow start, really. So uh, these were originally ranked in kind of order of followers, as you can see, for September 2012. So um, McDonald's were, you know, quite a way behind Coca-Cola at the time, but have now leapfrogged them by about one and a half times, uh, which is actually really quite significant if you kind of consider that uh, the adoption of Twitter and people following organisations is, is increasing so rapidly. Um, the numbers that we had previous to this was kind of a comparison of September 2011 to 2012. Um, and one of the things I can tell you now is they hadn't grown as much as they had this time around in the nine months rather than the 12 months, which means that Twitter adoption uh, is accelerating quite significantly. But and in some ways, that's really a bit of a surprise because, you know, in September 2012, which isn't very long ago, uh, I would have thought, you know, Twitter was, was would have been quite quite mature there, but, you know, growths of... 70 to 250 percent is, is is pretty massive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's I think it's probably down to the fact that people are beginning to use social media as almost a form of complaint. Uh, they feel that it's it's a way to perhaps get their their concerns, their their queries or whatever dealt with more uh, speedily because it's going to be looked at. Uh, the interesting point behind that, though, uh, is you can kind of see from here. Um, strangely, Starbucks don't respond to tweets. Although they've got almost 4 million followers, they don't respond to tweets at all. Uh, they only use it uh, for marketing messaging. Um, people are kind of uh, you know, uh, using the at Starbucks uh, handle all the time, but they're not getting uh, responses. Uh, Coca-Cola, you know, not doing too bad a job actually, strangely. 30% in this particular sample, 30% uh, in around about 17 minutes, and then McDonald's only around about 10%. Um, at around about a 35 minute mark. Now, the reason why this is important is that if you consider that most of you, I guess, uh, have or work in a contact center of some description, uh, you will be taking calls from customers. Uh, we've already seen that uh, people are using email. We're already seeing that people, you know, some people are using web chat. Uh, some will offer uh, an SMS as well. Um, but these organizations uh, who all have contact centers are only responding to 10% uh, of the tweets or 30% of the tweets or none at all. Uh, would you have another kind of uh, media channel, if that makes sense, where you would have such low uh, response rates? I severely doubt it. Um, so part of the, the social the social piece is to actually get you know staffed up almost to be able to to speak to these you know to speak to your consumers where and how they want. Um, and there's a, a big move at the moment in, the, in kind of industry to move away from um, multi-channel, if that makes sense, as in point solutions or, or pockets of, of expertise that offer uh, particular responses down a particular channel route to more of an omni-channel uh, type uh, fare, which is ultimately any customer, any time, uh, anyhow. So it might start off as a Twitter conversation or uh, something on a Facebook wall, which then migrates into a, a call seamlessly or maybe into email or something like that. Um, 
the, the final piece is, you know, kind of what does that mean? Why why would Twitter be important? Well, <clears throat> socially engaged customers on average spend around about 30% more with the brand. Um, so from a, a kind of cost or revenue perspective, that's extremely important. Um, and also, if you're looking, you know, most organizations are looking at their cost base uh, and where they can perhaps save money. If you look at social interactions, they typically cost 50% or less uh, of traditional methods. So that's, you know, phone. Uh, obviously, voice is still the, the most expensive um, media channel to, to kind of service. But even web chat and email uh, is still around 50% of the cost, yet organizations still aren't necessarily kind of uh, plowing in, if you will, into, into this media space because perhaps they haven't really kind of got to grips with with things. Um, I think we were opening up a, another poll now, weren't we, John T? Yeah, indeed. So the question uh, is, do you have an online community built for your members? Uh, the votes are no, uh, no online community. Yes, a community where we can collect feedback and uh, a community where customers can interact with each other. And, uh, we're going to share the uh, results up on the screen. Uh, so Dave, 51% have no uh, community. 33% uh, have a com community for collecting feedback, but only only a quarter of the audience have a, a community where customers can interact with each other. And it'd be quite interesting if anyone's got a um, uh, an online community where people are chatting with each other. If you can share what uh, share with the audience through the chat room what people are doing on that, and that's on the callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. So quite quite a small result there, Dave. Uh, what's your thought thinking on that? Uh, strangely, I'm not actually that surprised by the number that we just saw there. Um, the reason being uh, is that a lot of organizations have uh, kind of Facebook and Twitter and they feel that that's probably enough. Um, one of the things that I guess you have to bear in mind, uh, and I'm not going to go into, into this in too much depth because this, you know, we're, we're really beginning to kind of get into what social media strategy really kind of looks, feels, and smells like. But um, if you consider that when you walk into uh, perhaps an organization or you take, you know, a new job that is, or a new community, new town, um, you don't typically have any relationships with people. Um, now, the reason why this is important, you know, you're not born with a relationship, if that makes sense. You're born and then you develop relationships with your parents, family, friends over time. If you kind of consider that uh, everything starts in some form of community, and what I mean by community is you, you, know, you kind of share something in common, be that the place in which you live, uh, the company you work for, interests, hobbies, whatever it happens to be, you typically walk into a community not knowing anyone. Uh, you then start to develop friends, uh, family, whatever that happens to be, and then over time that kind of develops into you know, more of a, a stronger relationship, if that makes sense. Uh, and then from there, that re those relationships, you know, as you move between jobs or move between towns or whatever it happens to be, you take those friends with you and you build this kind of network. Well, social networks, you know, you're kind of looking at the, the likes of Facebook and Twitter here. They really are networks as opposed to anything else. You, you need a community in order to kind of underpin it because without the community, uh, you can't really develop the relationship, if that makes sense. And, you know, businesses are really trying to get a, a greater understanding of their consumers, but without a, a community, uh, how do you do that? Uh, you, you're not going to build a relationship by telling them stuff all the time. It's, it's not enough. It needs to be two-way. I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail a little bit later, but I'm not massively surprised uh, by the results. Um, and I think that's one of the areas that a lot of organizations are really going to have to start investing uh, some thought and some time in. Um, so before I kind of go into you know, social engagement versus social strategy and kind of talk around about that a little bit more, um, one of the things that is really important is that social marketing doesn't uh, and is not social customer service. You know, you can kind of read the slide for yourself. I'm only going to pick up on one particular thing, but if you consider the function of marketing, it's, it's you know, to uh, increase the awareness of the brand and ultimately to help deliver additional sales in one way, shape, or form. You know, you, you don't advertise on TV or, you know, you don't take, uh, you know, digital media space out for the fun of it. You do it for a specific reason, which is, you know, to raise company awareness or to sell a particular uh, product or, you know, to ultimately to uh, sell the brand. Customer service isn't about that whatsoever. Customer service is about um, looking after your customers and making sure that they're, you know, they're happy. Now, the, the one thing, you know, the, the one uh, area that we've really got to kind of pick up on here is that um, marketing typically own the, the social media tools really still. Um, not always, but the, the bulk of organizations still have a lot of, um, 
I guess uh, they, their marketing teams have a lot more uh, influence in the social space just because of the type of thing that it is. But the important thing to, to kind of look at here is that a typical response from marketing would be, let me find you someone. The reason being is because they're simply not geared to be able to, to respond to customer queries uh, or, or a, a, a post. You know, They're asking something, they're saying something. Marketing won't necessarily understand. They're probably, almost certainly, they're not going to have access to mainframe systems or you know where or systems where customer accounts or orders or something like that are kept. Um, and even if they do, it's unlikely they're going to understand how to service that customer. Whereas uh, a customer service advisor, uh, as in the contact center, well, that's what they do day in day out. They're doing it on the telephone right now. They're doing it on the web. Uh, they're doing it on email. So it kind of makes a lot more sense for social media to, not necessarily the strategy, but the social media you know, engagement piece, really to sit within the contact center. And that's the thing that I think a lot of organizations are trying to wrestle with right now, but it's absolutely critical that the contact center uh, kind of uh, engages with the customers at that level, as opposed to leaving it to marketing, who perhaps think throw things over the fence. Just want to kind of touch a little bit more around social engagement versus social strategy. So, you know, we've kind of touched on these things already. So, uh, two uses really for, and I call this social engagement uh, at the moment. So, for social media is, you know, ultimately marketing, talking about things or using it for some form of PR. And also, it's an extension of the contact center, which is, it's a media form that we have to respond to. Uh, the customers are saying something, so we need to get back to them and we need to be listening to what they're saying effectively. That's social engagement. That's not strategy. That's just simply a means by which you proactively tell customers, you know, it's, it's a sales tool or a marketing tool and it's a response tool. Um, that isn't a strategy uh, as it currently stands. You know, what you've got to bear in mind is that a strategy has to be engaging and valuable uh, to consumers. Uh, it needs to be collaborative at, on a, you know, uh, from a business to consumer, marketing, consumer to business, which is pretty much what most organizations are doing in the contact center space right now, but also this sense of community. It has to be consumer to consumer as well. Um, a, a good example I can give you here, um, and it's strangely something uh, I'm going through myself, uh, and I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores, but um, B&Q, uh, if, if you're not from the UK, so B&Q uh, are a D&Y, DIY, as in do-it-yourself kind of uh, chain uh, of shops where you can go and buy anything from a light bulb to paint to, to whatever it happens to be. You wouldn't typically expect this type of brand or this type of organization to be particularly active in social media. However, they have a YouTube channel in which they have members of staff who are typically, you know, slightly better with their hands, should we say, than me, uh, who kind of works in an office. Um, they're, they're able to, you know, uh, plumb in a bathroom or, or wire up some new lights, whatever it happens to be. But what they use a YouTube channel for is they actually use it uh, to, to inform the customers of how to use the products that they sell. So it's not just about going to buy, buy a new bathroom. They actually will then kind of show you how to install that bathroom. Yes, it may not be the exact one that you've got, but it will certainly give you a very, very good idea of exactly what steps you need to kind of undertake to, to get that project of yours completed. Now, why is that important? Well, there are other DIY brands in the UK uh, who aren't offering that type of, of service. Now, me personally, I'll do some research ahead of time. Yes, I'll use social media. So strangely, I've, I've used the B&Q channel, and then I'll go into B&Q um, to ask them uh, about you know, uh, you know, any follow-up questions that I might have. I wouldn't use another brand because they're not going to know what B&Q have perhaps put up there. They're not even going to necessarily want to talk about it. They'll want to talk about their own products and services. So straight away, just by being active on social media and just you know, doing something very, very simple, um, they've now started to create brand loyalty uh, and a, a sense of community because on, obviously, as you know, on YouTube, you can post comments. So again, you're now creating a community element where not only are you providing content, which is going to be useful, you can then allow them, uh, your customers to then start talking to each other about perhaps, well, is this, was that a, a good bathroom set or a good set of lights? I'm trying to do this. What do you think? And now straight away, you create a very, very simple community where now you're kind of invested within the brand. So it's engaging, it's valuable, it is consumer to consumer as well as business to consumer, and it's collaborative. So uh, an organization you wouldn't expect to particularly play in this space are doing a really fantastic job. Uh, and that's, that's a social strategy, that's not just social engagement. We all know that the contact center is the cornerstone uh, of customer experience. Uh, and what we mean by this is that 
uh, you guys in the contact center space are ultimately talking to customers via whatever media channel it happens to be on a daily basis. The marketing teams, the PR teams, um, wherever they happen to be, they're not. They're, they're out there to promote a brand. They're out there to potentially protect the brand. They're not really looking at what good customer service looks like. We are all, I guess, you all have customer satisfaction uh, scores. My guess is that you're all looking at net promoter uh, scores as well. These things are really important to your organization, but really is allowing the marketing teams to, to kind of interact with the customers at that level the right place to, to be doing this? I would suggest not. I think they're fantastic at doing the brand promotion, but when it comes to uh, social discussion, uh, as in social interactions with your customer, that has to sit within a contact center of some description, because otherwise uh, the processes of the people aren't right. And just to follow on from that, you know, if you kind of consider that the, the, the contact center space, you've got the know-how, because you're doing it already on other channels. You're doing it on the telephone. You're doing it via email. Whatever it happens to be, you're already doing it today. The processes are in place, as well as the people who are executing those processes. And you've also got the disciplines around what good customer service looks like. That's making sure you provide a consistent service every time. That's making sure that you try to make, you know, ensure that it's a one, in this particular instance, I suppose it's a one tweet shop, if that makes sense. But it's got to be that, <clears throat> that first call resolution or the equivalent thereof in the kind of Twitter or Facebook world is as high as possible. Marketing would typically probably throw it over the fence or, or maybe, maybe not to be able to give the right information, whereas the contact center certainly can. And I'm not taking anything away from marketing there. It's just that they're not in that space. They're not there at the ground level understanding what the products and services that your organization offer and how they are physically serviced and how they are physically offered. So that's the important thing. And take constructive social action. You've got to have some way uh, of dealing with your consumers at that level. Um, the big problem is, at the moment, for most contact centers, you don't really have the tools, I, I don't feel, to, to manage a social dialogue rather than this kind of social monologue, which is the consumer you know, tweeting or posting on a Facebook and then potentially not getting anything back. If you look at the numbers earlier, the, the bulk of uh, organizations either don't respond or um, are responding within, I think it was within a day. I mean, if you consider a day, you've kind of lost lost the point uh, at that stage. Um, if you consider that social media really should be considered easily as, as important as web chat, uh, because it's an immediate thing. They've said something now, they need an answer now. Um, with email, they can afford to wait, no problems. I appreciate voice is always going to be important, but it's almost as important as voice. It's just a digital communication means as opposed to you know more of a, 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 an interaction across the voice channel. So it's something that really needs to be considered as high a priority, at least as web chat, if not higher. Um, I'm going to hand back to, to John T in a minute, but <clears throat> what I'd like to, or what I'll be t kind of talking about in the, the second segment and kind of showing you is the tool that we at Aspect have, uh, which is called Aspect Social. Um, it's a tool that we've de designed from the ground up, so it's, it's purpose built for the contact center. It does still retain the marketing elements. It does still allow you to, uh, to effectively proactively contact consumers, you know, via Twitter or Facebook or whatever. But ultimately, uh, the contact centers are used to you know, IVRs, ACDs, um, some form of inbox. They're, they're, they're used to structure. They're used to workflows. They're used to things being segmented in a particular way. And our tool, the Aspect Social tool, will uh, still allow you to do that. Whereas you know, if you kind of look at some of the free tools out there, it just happens to be whatever was said last appears at the top. Um, or you know, you're kind of scrolling through. Several people may also be able to respond to something at the same time, and potentially with differing advice or differing answers, which is you know always a bad place to be in. But typically, if a customer gets two responses, even if they're the same, they'll ask, "Well, why did I get two responses?" Uh, and you know, those tools aren't good enough to be able to respond to consumers in this way. When consumers aren't prepared. Uh, to have differing answers. It then just creates uncertainty and they'll go to a brand uh, that doesn't do that type of thing or they'll complain even louder uh, and they'll start complaining about the fact you're unable to even kind of answer these things uh, in a sensible way. So it's really, really critical that we get, that you know, organizations get this right and as a, an industry we get it right for the consumers to make sure that collectively we're all offering them the best, the best service uh, available. So John T, uh, back to you I think for, for the moment.
Hi, John T. You, you're still on mute. Not doing very well on my mute button here. So, a question <laughs> from the Ken in the audience: uh, Is there a comparison on number of followers on, say, a, a startup versus a well-established, well-established brand? Dave, I don't know if you've got it's a thought a, on this. Yeah, absolutely, Great. Ken. It's a really good question, actually. This and uh, a lot of smaller. Uh, contact centers or smaller businesses certainly uh, are kind of thinking, well, what's the point? I'm not going to have uh, enough people uh, to really necessarily warrant it. Yeah, obviously, the established brands and uh, uh, companies are going to have a lot more followers. They're going to have a lot more reach. However, the important thing is that even the smaller organizations or startups, y you have to effect effectively start somewhere. Now, whatever product or service you're offering is going to be relevant to someone. Um, uh, the way in which you're you're able to build your kind of social media following, if that makes sense, is by offering them something. Now that doesn't have to be something free of charge. It doesn't have to be you have to you know a, a prize of some description or competition. What it can be is information. It can be. Um, so for example, uh, I read just recently uh, about uh, a cycle shop. Uh, it happened to be based out in Germany, but it doesn't really make a difference where. Um, who are offering cycle excursions, if that makes sense, and cycling holidays. Uh, Germany earlier this year, as you're probably all aware, well aware, got hit by some really bad floods. Now, what that organisation chose to do was actually to start posting about, you know, why things are changing. Um, and as a result of that, you know, whilst their social media following at the time didn't particularly improve massively, it built consumer confidence and the confidence and that sense of community where people can kind of talk about their experiences and, you know, as an organisation, you're being a little bit more human about these types of things, whereas larger organizations probably have to be a little bit more corporate. If you're able to be a little bit more human, a little bit more interactive with uh, the consumer, then ultimately you're going to start building that confidence and that loyalty, and therefore it kind of becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. We call it a viral loop um, in, in kind of social media, social, social strategy terms, where you have, you know, you acquire customers and then you engage with them at the level in which they want. Um, there's a, 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 a a model called the Four Gears model by Jeffrey Moore, who's a U.S. business analyst, and it's kind of the, the the major thinking right now as to what a social media strategy looks like. So what you do is you acquire a customer, and then you've got to engage with them. Now, engaging with them doesn't necessarily mean something, you know, a free product, but it's got to be something um, that's engaging to them. You're then obviously able to monetize it, and then finally uh, you enlist their help. So by enlistment, kind of think Facebook uh, reviews, if that makes sense. So it's a really good question. I don't think it's necessarily a uh, bad or something to concern yourself over, but it's got to be relevant to the consumer. We've also had one from from James in the uh, chat room. Uh, there's a number of questions coming through, uh, and uh, if anyone's got any answers, the chat room, uh, callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. Uh, how do you balance the feedback from customers at the same time as separating disruptive customers within an online community? I guess this is one of the one of the, the, the great stumbling blocks at, to uh, having an online community. Dave, any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're always going to get, if you're disruptive customers, but you, you need to allow people to rant and rave, uh, I would guess. But it's then how you deal with the ranting and raving. Um, if you just allow them to rant and rave and you don't do anything to, to kind of, to, uh, if, if, okay, let's try, put it in a different way. If a consumer was complaining to you on the phone, shouting and screaming, you'd still deal with them and you'd still try to placate them and you'd still, still try to resolve their issue. It's exactly the same principle and exactly the same concept on social media. It's the people who are sometimes shouting the loudest that you almost need to turn into promoters. If you're able to, to demonstrate to them um, that you do as a brand care um, and you will do something about it. It's got to be relevant to the consumer, and you've got to make sure that you, you know, you get them a response as quickly as possible. But feedback for consumers is really important. That will kind of help you inform perhaps your, you know, your brand strategy, your product strategies in the future, or maybe help simplify some processes that our customers are finding difficult. But engaging with the ones who are disruptive, you know, they're the ones that will then ultimately you can then almost kind of show as a, a case study that. Yes, we do have concerned customers who are really quite unhappy, but as an organization, we care enough to spend the time to resolve their, their concerns and their, their problems. And again, you almost, again, you're demonstrating yourself as an organization who does care, who, is in, who are in, uh, concerned with customer service and customer satisfaction. And I certainly think things like uh, customer moderation, moderators can also be very, uh, very powerful for, for balance, balancing disruptive 
disruptive uh, disruptive customers. Uh, it's quite a way of doing that. But I'm going to do a jump to another poll now, and I want to ask the question of the audience: What challenges do you face with social customer service? Oh, that's a bit of a good each way bet there, uh, Dave. So uh, looks like one of yours has come uh, come in uh, at the front of that one. Uh, channels not integrated, 64%, um, and that's that's uh, I guess it's it's quite surprising how big bigger problem that's coming. But I, I guess if people are phoning up, emailing, uh, you know, social mediaing, just trying to tie all those conversations together. Uh, interestingly, still a very high degree of um, ownership with marketing. On there, certainly, I've seen a lot of organisations where almost ownership is now split with marketing, where perhaps uh, customer services have a uh, a you know a, a cares page, you know this company cares page, and the marketing is is done with the difference, so almost like two Twitter accounts uh, or two Facebook accounts uh, as a way of dealing with that. What I'd like to do yeah. now is uh, just drill down on this a little bit more and ask the audience. What is the biggest single challenge you face with social customer service? Your biggest single challenge. If you'd just like to type your answer into the question box on the right-hand side of the screen. So the question is, what is your biggest challenge with social customer service? So just wait a short while for those to uh, come through. So we've got some uh, ones started to come through. Ken has said, keeping consistent quality of responses. Uh, there's a danger of sending before sending before thinking. Uh, I guess that's a, that's a, a quite a challenge one. Uh, language constraints, things like trying to get everything out in 140 characters, uh, is quite a difficult one. Uh, Liz says agent skill set. Simon says integration with all channels. Um, Natasha says a problem, interesting one, handling the shouters, because I guess on uh, uh, becomes quite uh, challenging. Uh, Julian says filtering the data that comes through and making sure that it's actioned. Uh, the Leaf said talking and chatting, danger that agents are doing too much. Uh, handling cues in a reasonable time, Jill asked the question, so what is reasonable? Uh, avoiding agents looking into Facebook every day, uh, I guess that's a, that's a, a challenge if you're handling Facebook, you can't exactly uh, block it. Uh, finding the right software solution is a problem that Chris has got, potentially we'll be covering that in a, in a short while. And um, uh, Trevor said, in uh, sales environments, clients want to join via the social platforms, uh, which tends to allow their competitors to see uh, leads and potentially steal from them. So that's certainly one that I haven't thought about. Uh, and there's quite a number, uh, I like the one from L1 in the chat room, Turning the screamers into into cheerleaders. So, Dave, there's quite a quite a, a variety on there um, of different issues. But it looks like technology seems to be one of them, and actually just dealing with with shouters on the, on social media. Any any thoughts on those two? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm not surprised about that technology piece uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and I'm hoping uh, I'm not going to answer this one now because we've got a, the, the second segment kind of coming up in a minute. But ultimately. Um, it, there are technology, there are tools out there which will really support you and hopefully we can kind of demonstrate one of the tools today that will answer actually strangely most of those. Um, for the shouters into the cheerleaders, I think that's a, an extremely good one. I've not heard that one before but I might have to use that in the future. I think I think where that comes in is that um, you've got to answer the shouters you know, in, in a very, very speedy way. You've got to get uh, to their, their particular issues very, very quickly. That's technology, and again, we're going to show you how that kind of happens or how that can work. The other piece is ensuring that you've got uh, some really skilled people who are then able to deal with that very quickly and closing it down. It's exactly the same um, as someone uh, who is ranting and raving on a telephone call, as I said. You've got to make sure that you can kind of close these people down quickly, demonstrate to anyone who looks at it again in the future. The reason why it's called media is because it's public. You, you know, you can't kind of stop people from, from seeing it, if that makes sense. Um, but if you can close it down quickly or demonstrate that you're doing everything possible, and even if they are still shouting and screaming, other people will look at it and say, well, the organization at least tried. Uh, and whether they, they turn into a cheerleader or, cheerleader or not, it's the other cheerleaders that you will uh, effectively gain because as an organization you did your best. 
to try to, to, to resolve whatever the, the issue was in the first place. Um, but really good, really, really good, uh, you know, really good issues, I suppose. Not, you can't really have a good issue, but uh, some really good comments. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed for that, Dave. So we're going to go now have a look at the uh, technologist. Just a reminder while Dave's speaking uh, that if you want to win a bottle of uh, champagne for the uh, best uh, tip on uh, dealing with social customer service, if you'd like to uh, leave that uh, uh, tip into the question box and uh, we'll be uh, reviewing some of those tips in a, in a short while. So Dave, across to you and uh, if you can take us through a sort of demonstration of what some of the technology can do. Sure. So hopefully you can see my screen okay? We can indeed. Marvellous, because I can't see anymore. Um, so I just want to show you uh, the, the tool which we have uh, aspect. Um, so what I've done is I've already created some Facebook posts and a tweet as well to kind of show you that uh, there are multiple media types in which it can kind of come in on. Um, the reason why I've done this ahead of time is simply so that we don't waste time watching me type stuff, if that makes sense. So. Um, as you can see, uh, I've got a customer here called Jesse Rowe, um, and we're talking about the shouters. Uh, so our top Facebook post, and I didn't post them, by the way, in this particular order, and I'll come on to that in a second. Um, you've got a hashtag not happy. So this is someone who, who's obviously explaining to you they're not happy about something. And the hashtag, uh, and I've done this very deliberately, the hashtag came from Facebook as opposed to Twitter, uh, although I know that Facebook are going to start reporting on hashtags in the future like Twitter does, but I just want to kind of demonstrate that. Uh, we've then got, um, uh, you know, I really need some help, um, you know, saying my accounts are overdrawn. Uh, and then finally, why is, you know, why is my credit card being declined? I paid the bill last week. Um, so as you can see, we've kind of got Facebook for the top two, uh, and then we also have uh, Twitter down the bottom here. Um, you'll see that the, the kind of person's picture, and at the top left, you've got a P1, a P2, and a P3. And the P stands for priority. So once uh, your customer, in our instance, Jesse Rowe, uh, and this fictitious uh, organization is a bank, if that makes sense, it's a financial organization, which is why we'll talk about ATM fees and being overdrawn on credit cards and like. So <clears throat> based on certain keywords, hashtag not happy being one of them, we can prioritize that uh, as the highest priority uh, that appears in the queue. So some tools that are out there will just simply do it based on a timeline, as in whichever is most recent will be at the top. In our tool, what we do is we have a look at what the uh, what the, the the post or the tweet is saying, um, and then from there we we detect sentiment or detect specific words, uh, and therefore we can then choose we can assign a priority to them. Therefore, your your you know your advisors go from the top of the list to the bottom of the list if that makes sense, um, and rather than just being some kind of unordered mess, really is what uh, some of the other tools are out there that offer. Um, the other key thing to, to kind of point out here is that uh, we've got, although Jesse Rowe, our, our fictitious person here, uh, has posted twice, um, as you can see, our second one down uh, came in 50 minutes ago. So 50 minutes ago uh, and then 2.58s. So the, 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 if you will, the, the kind of most recent is actually the second down simply because of the prioritization. Now, it, as an advisor, what I can now do is I can now go and claim these conversations. So if I go and claim that the top conversation, what you'll see on my screen um, is that we now only have two in the available queue, uh, and I now have this particular post, this particular uh, this particular interaction assigned to me. So none of my colleagues can now actually see this particular post anymore because it's assigned to me. So you don't have the issue now where uh, customers, or sorry, your advisors are trying to deal with the same customer twice because they both happen to pick the top one in the list, and they both sadly happen to pick it at the same time. So contact centers are used to um, using some kind of workflow. What I mean by workflow, a customer comes in to an IVR or perhaps enters a, an account number and then it's routed through to a particular location and that location is staffed up by particular advisors who are then able to help. So in our, more, in our uh, financial uh, services organization, for example, you might have credit cards, you might have uh, general customer service, you might have account queries, you might have mortgages, you might have loans, um, you might have insurance. You know, you've got a whole bunch of things. You're going to have agents with specialisms, and therefore you're going to want to drop the customer in the most appropriate queue. Well, <clears throat> one of the things uh, that we are able to do is we have work queues. So in a very, very similar way to your, your experience of queues as it currently stands, we have work queues. And at the moment, we've dropped this into the accessibility work queue. The reason being is because we had ATM 
um, in the, the title. So we consider ATM as being able to access a service, if that makes sense, in this particular issue. What we can do as well is we can see where it came from. So we know that it came from Facebook. And also, we know what language it came in on. So it will support multiple languages. Um, Again, you could choose, if you wanted to, to root based on language. So I think one of the issues was about uh, how you deal with language. Uh, if you have multilingual advisors, then you can make sure it goes to the correct uh, advisor in the correct queue. Um, so not all advisors work on all of the queues unless you wanted them to. They can be very, very specifically arranged uh, however you wish. Now, <clears throat> another important factor within this is uh, Jesse Rowe, obviously, is one of our test users. So we have, we've had conversation with Jesse Rowe in the past. And on the right-hand side of the screen over here, you can see straight away what conversations we've had with this person in the past. So just by simply clicking uh, on the conversations, we can see how many are currently open, which are the ones on the left-hand side which are on the available queue, which I uh, uh, sorted out for this particular demonstration. Yet we can also see all of the closed conversations as well that we've had with this particular person. So if they're asking the same thing, we can say we can provide them with the same answer. If it's a brand new question, then that's fine. But if they're ever, uh, ever returning to something that's been discussed in the past, then straight away uh, you can then go and see it. The important thing to note here is that if a customer, for whatever reason, sorry, if you deal with a customer and you don't choose to effectively end the conversation fully, as in put some kind of termination code to the conversation, if they ever respond, it will come straight back to you. So again, you you have the conversation rather than you know one of your colleagues or one of the other uh, advisors in the contact center needing to read what's already been said to understand what's going on with this particular customer. And now tone or perhaps level of information or detail of information may change along with the change in person who's kind of dealing with it. One of the, the questions was how, how do we, again, how do we ensure consistency? Well, we have a knowledge base. So what we can do uh, is, uh, on this, I'm just going to type in loans for the sake of argument, because uh, I know that we have uh, so, some loans uh, knowledge base questions up. So straight away, I can now, uh, I've now got a knowledge base around uh, lending. So I can make sure that I respond to a, the customer in the most appropriate way, because we can build a knowledge base. We've also got templates as well. So um, I don't know, one of the things we asked about was unhappy feedback. So simply by clicking on unhappy feedback, we can now respond to the customer in, in a, a very, very you know, consistent uh, and concise way. So sorry to hear you feel that way. I will pass along your feedback. Please let us know if we can help. So then what we can do is on Facebook, we can either comment. So we, do, we post back to the comment on Facebook uh, or a private message. Um, I'll, I'll simply post this one out for now so you can kind of see what it looks like from the customer's perspective. Um, so that gets sent to the customer. Um, and now what we can do is we can now start seeing uh, the build-up of the history. Now, this will go back out our fictitious company, Social Bank R Us. This will go back out a Social Bank. However, um, when you have a look at the history of the case, you can see who responded and who said what. So obviously, you is me. But if one of my colleagues were to log in and have a look at this particular conversation, uh, you would see straight away uh, who it was. So if I have a look at one of the old conversations, perhaps, uh, that I know that I haven't dealt with. Um, if we have a look at this one, for example, uh, we can see that one of my colleagues, Tony Lama, uh, was dealing with this particular conversation. We can see absolutely everything uh, that was occurring with that particular post. So really, really simple, uh, really, really easy. So I'm just going to simply go back to the one that I, uh, I was dealing with. We've obviously responded to, to our customer. Um, there's obviously no further action in this particular instance, but if I wanted to, um, I could snooze the conversation and then come back to it at a, late, a later time. And what I mean by that is effectively like setting a call back in a kind of a voice world. So you can then say, you know, if there's a follow-up to be had, you can make sure you kind of do that, uh, that follow-up whenever. Uh, and then you can close the conversation down however you want. Um, at the moment, we have just these seven reasons. But again, you create whatever reasons you wish to see. So I'm just going to simply say uh, that's resolved. And now what you'll see is... Um, we, we don't have that conversation in our available queue anymore. It just kind of goes away. And as I said, the prioritization, if something were to be posted in in the meantime, then it would be assigned a priority. So my next um, post that I'd be dealing with, if again it was someone who wasn't happy, so again if it was a shouter, would simply drop to the top of the queue. So I'd deal with them straight away. Um, in terms of the amount of time, so uh, one of the things we asked earlier was around 
how long does it take? Um, I know that a lot of tools um, that if they're you know a proper social media tool, if that makes sense, most take between 50 and 30 minutes, maybe even longer to actually get into the solution, if that makes sense. So a post is you know a tweet is is sent out there or something on the Facebook wall is posted out there, and if you're using some kind of social media tool. Um, then what will happen is it can take 15 to 30 minutes. With this solution, it's typically there within inside of a minute. Um, you know, we've been kind of obviously setting this up for, for today, uh, and that's how long it was taking, and that's how long it should be taking, because then you can actually have a productive conversation because it's still relevant to the consumer. Um, Dave, we've also had a couple of questions coming through while you're going through this. Uh, Chris has asked about are other languages uh, supported within this package, in particular Dutch or Flemish? Um, absolutely yes. So the, at the moment, the the localization of the product itself. So it will still say agent and supervisor rather than the the Dutch or Flemish version. But from a, a responding perspective and from the customer's perspective, you'll still see them in the language and you can still respond to them in the language. And all of the reasons that you saw a second ago, again, you can write that in Dutch. You can write that in Flemish. It does support double character byte sets. So uh, Norwegian. Uh, and obviously uh, kind of Chinese, Japanese type languages where you have, apologies, we're getting a bit technical, but you have double byte character sets as opposed to single byte. So absolutely, yes, it can support multiple languages and it's the localization is being worked on uh, to provide, you know, these words up here that you can see um, in the relevant language as well. Fabulous. And Ken's asked if it can be linked to a, a CRM uh, system. Can, customer han can customers handle attached to a customer account? Uh, if they're using a different channel to contact? Potentially, yes. I say potentially because it depends on the CRM solution. It depends on you know what development can or can't be done. So uh, the answer is yes, with a contingency or a kind of bit of a caveat that we haven't found one that we can't yet, but there, there may be some out there that we, we couldn't. OK, uh, great. Dave, places. so back back to you for, uh, for sort of your brief wrap up now. OK. Um, so you know, in in the 10, 12 minutes we've kind of been discussing this, obviously I can't show you all the the kind of great things about this particular tool. But ultimately, what I can uh, what I can show you is the fact that not only can you prioritise posts irrespective of when they came in, but based on certain keywords, um, you can also choose if you wish to to filter some out. So um, if you get positive feedback, you may choose actually not to respond to that at all. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. Um, it depends on the, the type of resource uh, that you're prepared to throw at this particular channel. But if you want to deal with the shouters, um, then absolutely you can with this tool. Other tools, you're going to find it extremely difficult. You're either going to need multiple uh, tools to do it, maybe something to handle Twitter, maybe something to handle Facebook, etc. Whereas here we can centralize everything. And then that way, you also provide a, a, a consistent customer experience. The final piece I'm, I'm going to touch on very quickly is just around uh, how this tool is also able uh, to still satisfy your marketing team's needs as well. So you don't need multiple solutions, one for marketing, one for, uh, for the contact center. We have a publisher element. Um, so what you can do is, as you can see on towards the kind of left-hand side of the screen here, we have two that are scheduled. Uh, the kind of keen sighted amongst you might see uh, that these have actually been scheduled for January the 3rd. And you might be wondering, well, it's it's a hell of a lot later than January the 3rd, so why hasn't that gone? Uh, well, very, very simply, it's been scheduled for 2014. Uh, so obviously, we're able to schedule these things on a calendar basis and at a time basis that will suit you, um, obviously up to a lot in the future. On our right-hand side here, we can see what has been published and also some statistics off the back. So you can publish to both Twitter and Facebook at the same time if you wished, or one or the other if you have multiple Facebook pages. So if you are spanning multiple countries, then you could potentially post, for example, um, any English-speaking countries, you could post to all of your English kind of, any English-speaking countries, you could post to their Facebook pages. Spanish, for example, a lot of South America will speak Spanish with the exception of, uh, of Brazil, which speaks Portuguese. And obviously mainland Spain is Spanish as well. So if you have a kind of South American, you know, Uruguay, Paraguay type areas, as you know, as well as mainland Spain, you can push to them all at the same time. And as a result, what you can do for Twitter, obviously, the number of retweets, replies, and the number of followers off the back of the post that you made, and also on Facebook, the number of likes, comments, shares, and then page likes. So really, really simple stuff. One of the things was uh, one of the questions was around 140 characters. 
uh, for Twitter. If you do go over it, um, our solution provides a tiny URL, so you'll see the first 140 and then the tiny URL so they can see the rest of the conversation. Uh, and within the side of that, you can embed URLs if you want to send them to particular web pages, perhaps to get further information than like as well. The final piece that I will just touch on just so you can see what happens, so uh, it's not all smoke and mirrors. Um, this really is the internet, as in this really is Facebook, so we really have created this page. So uh, if you go and have a look at Social Bank Garage, you will actually see this uh, occurring. Um, so uh, I was talking, I believe, about uh, an ATM, uh, if I can find it. Uh, no, I can't. Brilliant. I can't find the post uh, to kind of go back and show you the, the comment, uh, I'm afraid, uh, but it would have been uh, replied back to uh, on this particular page. Uh, if I just quickly refresh it to see if that's going to bring it back. Unfortunately, I also have colleagues who are obviously using it at the moment. Uh, so no, I'm afraid I can't show you, but it would have come back through um, in the say, uh, on the same post uh, that was made. So uh, for example, if we have a look at the comments uh, for this particular piece, you can see that Social Bank has been replying to these things uh, as part of the conversational thread. Fabulous. Well, we've got a number of uh, tips we need to uh, uh, cover through now, uh, Dave. So thanks very much for that. If someone wants to do uh, have a sort of more in-depth, uh, you know, run through of this, what's best? Is it to, to to contact you or or contact us and we put in touch with with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we we can send out contact details if if you want to kind of get in touch with John. So you can obviously pass the details on. Um, maybe make a comment in the uh, the chat room area and we can get back in touch with you or, or direct message myself uh, as well. Okay, well it's now t thanks very much for that Dave, it's now time to uh, run through some of the tips for uh, social customer service, we've got quite a number sent through, chance to still win a, a bottle of champagne, we'll pick the winner uh, after the uh, after today's webinar. Um, quite an interesting one from Dean, separate your customer service from your marketing. Smaller companies don't always want to broadcast their customer feedback. Uh, if our support is good feedback, then the marketing guys will retreat. Uh, I think it's certainly a nice one. Uh, and uh, David has said uh, the best way to uh, deal with a uh, issue on uh, customer service is to engage the customer early and continue the dialogue via direct messaging rather than in public. Uh, provide a link to a CRM system to allow the contact to progress to another channel with history. Certainly, Dave, you know, uh, if you like, airing your dirty washing in public is, uh, is, is one to be careful of. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, again, it comes back to the shouters. If you're able to resolve, um, if you're able to resolve the query, um, sometimes you, by direct messaging, you're not then able to see the fact that the organization did care, that the organization did do something about it. So you're absolutely right, David. You do need to be careful. Not all instances um, it's it's relevant or correct to can kind of t continue in a public space. But if you consider the fact that um, by responding in a public way, then obviously people can see the fact as an organization uh, you do have uh, customer service there as well. So Kate's got a good one for expectation setting. My top tweet is to tweet in the morning, you're available until 4 p.m. to answer tweets, and then to sign off, send a sign-off tweet at the end of the day to say you'll be back tomorrow. It sets the expectation that if tweets are only responded to during office hours. Certainly uh, uh, people now can sort of tweet at any time, so they expect almost an answer uh, back straight away. Uh, and Richard said re re replies should be to the point and personal to the individual who posted it, at the same time showing all other viewers or followers what you're doing to address their problem, even if you need to take it offline. So I guess this is about what you're talking, Dave, about the importance of, of being visible. Absolutely, yeah, and that's, you know, that's kind of, without actually having seen Richard's uh, post, because uh, I've been obviously presenting, it's a very, very good uh, tip that, and just kind of uh, continues to perhaps strengthen uh, the case I was making. Ken has said, when I did some uh, net promoter score surveys with my customers and followers, it became very clear that the customers I had a higher level of social, social interaction with were much more likely to give a higher net promoter score. Those people who have become a member of my tribe are definitely much more likely to share or retweet my stuff. So that's quite Absolutely. interesting. 
again, Ken, on on this, you built that relationship with the customers. You have that for you know almost you have a community feel to things. You've you've developed that relationship with the people. And as I said in one of the slides, uh, socially engaged customers on average spend uh, typically spend around about 30% more. And those who are more engaged are more likely to retweet because that then kind of if you remember the four gears model I referred to. Uh, you engage with customers, you then monetize them, and then you enlist their help, which is ultimately to kind of bring you back to the point of acquiring in the first place. Certainly an awful lot of customers seem absolutely amazed that, uh, uh, that their uh, stuff gets dealt with on social media, which is good. Well, it said for champagne. Well, well that's up for us to decide. Uh, when posting on Facebook, be mindful of how edge ranks works. I'm not sure what edge rank is out there. To reach more people and get more views directly on Facebook, and not through a third-party app or software. Engage followers, like ask questions. The more edges, the more views, and the further the reach. You got any idea what an edge is there, Dave? I'm um, afraid not. I'm not exactly sure what he means by the edge. I'm, I'm guessing is uh, the third-party applications. So some third-party applications, uh, when they post, kind of don't post directly via that that person, if that makes sense, or that organisation. Um, so if you're not posting as yourself, then obviously you're not going to get those things back. But I'm afraid, I don't know what, what he means there by edges. Well, I think Bullet's typing into the, uh, into the chat room. So if, uh, when his uh, message comes through, I think we can uh, hopefully uh, get some clarification on that. Um, Sandeep has said, empower your custom service team to respond without having to hold hands with management every step of the way. And I guess this is the, the challenge of getting stuff through compliance if you're writing stuff. Uh, your customer service, service team should be trained using hypothetical situations and past issues. An emphasis should, we, should be placed on how response time is, is crucial. I think this is almost what Clive Woodward, Clive Woodward would say, is thinking clearly under pressure. Um, Dave, I quite like that, sort of coaching on hypothetical situations. So when the real thing comes through, you've already dealt with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I guess, Sandeep, the in a contact center space, you're typically going to do this on the for, for you know your customer service advisors anyway, no matter what channel. So it is just as important for the the social media space as well. Um, I do like the last point you make there around the emphasis should be placed on how uh, crucial response time is. I completely agree with you. Um, I think that social media, if you're going to be responding to people, it has to be. It can't be immediate, but it needs to be as as quick. Uh, it needs to be a quicker response as possible else they've moved on and they don't care anymore. Um, you certainly wouldn't do it for, for web chat, you certainly wouldn't do it for voice, uh, so why would you do it for, for social media? Indeed. Well, I'm going to make a couple more uh, tips. Uh, Dean said our social, uh, our two types of social interaction are completely separate, one for our support desk and one for the company marketing. I think that's certainly a very, uh, a very good one to, uh, very good one to do. And uh, Ruth has said, treat social customer service like any other positive relationship. People through whatever medium uh, want uh, to be treated in a timely, respectable, and courteous manner. Certainly, uh, certainly like that. And we've got a comment back from uh, Bullant about the uh, edge rank. Edge rank is an algorithm that Facebook use. Uh, they use a system of edges that relate to everything you do on Facebook, i.e. like comments, reply, share, etc. Right. The more interactive you are, the higher your rank, and the more Facebook will post, push your post to users. Well, I've learned something there. It works a little bit like uh, the clout score. So uh, clout is a uh, basically an online influence, um, if that makes sense. It's kind of aggregated from uh, any social site you post where you use the same email address. So I guess it's the same thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's um, the more you directly uh, respond to people, the more content that you produce that's relevant, uh, the more likes you get, uh, the more, uh, I suppose, more friendly Facebook will be to you when promoting. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really important. Again, uh, I suppose I said during the, the kind of first segment, it needs to be engaging. <clears throat> it can't just be product push. It needs to be stuff that consumers will want to reshare, <clears throat> will want to retweet, or, or also will want to like. Um, Facebook itself is is really clever for those things. If if you can get a customer to like your page, or you can get someone to like your page, uh, then you can start seeing their timeline. So you can start seeing 
uh, what they're saying as well. So uh, that's the reason why everyone's kind of throwing up these free competitions for whatever it happens to be, so they can get access to your newsfeed. Fabulous.